And welcome back to our next portion of our Dungeons of Chaos playthrough. Now we're getting ready to wrap up our Guild Quest Saga here and finish off with our Geomancer's Guild. And the Guild Master that is for the Guild is actually located in the Druid's Cove. So we go back to the Druid's Cove and we'll have to speak with our little green guy here. And Amicio will actually give us our guild uh, quest. We'll go ahead and pick that entry. We need to find at least six of the stone monuments across the lands and invoke their blessings by looking at their carvings. Now what he means by that is we have one right here. We simply uh, search for it. It will automatically highlight if we are near it and click search. Now you read the carvings. And they start to glow. We receive a blessing. All players have received plus five resistance to lightning. And we have something special in our inventory. We have crystals, which is a geomancer's insignia. Uh, save these. Do not sell them. Because uh, you wouldn't be able to get them back. And we're going to go ahead and equip this one since we don't have it. Uh, actually, I... Once we get our Geomancers unlocked, we're going to go ahead and equip one of these since we don't have an insignia for uh, him. But that's what we're going to do. And there's a handful of them in the Valley North here that we can get. And if we go over here, a lot of them are hidden in kind of uh, semi-obscure parts of the map. So you'll really have to skim the edges uh, and go in Mountain Pass where you normally probably haven't ventured too far into and in our adventures with the playthrough we've seen a few of them around we haven't uh, talked much about them but there are about a dozen of them we'll go ahead and search this one we have plus five to all invasion and of course we do have the crystals that get thrown into our inventory automatically And then we're going to do the ones that are in the uh, the valley at the moment. There's a uh, cleverly hidden one uh, that if you're not being due diligent about uh, searching or exploring and getting rid of all the black on the uh, map, uh, there's a few that you probably would miss. I certainly on my first uh, handful of playthroughs completely missed a few of them. Uh, I didn't worry too much about them, but we did miss them. And one in particular is this little uh, one. There's a little forest back here in the uh, raided city. And you think it's just kind of like a little forest, but if you go into the very center of it, we have a monument. Yep. Not needing a rest. That one gives us uh, life uh, draining resist, plus five. That is always a welcomed bonus. And these blessings are permanent. They, they do add to uh, our stats. And again, every little bit uh, does help. Again, they're, like I said, they're in uh, fairly obscure places. It gets you uh, off the beaten path and exploring the uh, world just a little bit more. If you guys notice, I did turn uh, our daylight function off for this quest. I, I do want to mention that. Uh, it just makes this portion of it a little bit easier. We're not having uh, our dwindling daylight. We're not having to cast uh, light continuously uh, searching around. Again, that's kind of a convenience factor. Uh, once we get done finding these monuments, we'll go ahead and click that back on. Or if you want to, uh, you can leave it on or leave it off. That is completely up to you guys. 
the settings are always uh, just preferential. That one is plus one the dexterity. That's always nice. All right, and if you guys can remember, we did find one uh, when we were doing the Wizards Guild, and we were down in the Abyss, and that is also in the Valley, so let's go ahead and run over to that side of the Valley and run down into the Abyss and get that one. So far, we are looking at uh, one on the east side, the Druid's Cove, the Raided City, and the one on the west side. So that is four. We need two more. So we'll have to go outside the valley to find our uh, other one after we get this one in the, the abyss. We are just a bit too far south for that. There we go. Let's go ahead and jump into here. It is a fair ways down there. Uh, remember right, it's probably four or five of the uh, tunnels down. But this is another uh, real simple quest. If you guys uh, have explored enough, you probably know just about where every single one of them is. It's not really wanting to run into him, but uh, we'll take it. He should get uh, dispatched fairly quickly. Yep. There it is. We'll go ahead and pull up our uh, map just to make sure on where that one actually is here. Doesn't look like it's going to be that one. Curve around and continue going down. Nice windy tunnel sound on <laughs> this map in the abyss. Just makes it seem uh, that much more hollow in depth. I think we are getting close here. We should. One of these down here. There it is. This one gives us plus five to magic resistance. So we're getting resistance and we're getting stats off of these. Now that was a uh, decent run down here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick jump cut and get back on top of the abyss and we'll continue once we're back in the valley. Now we're back in the valley here. Just got done getting the monument in the abyss. Now we'll have to go to the mountain path for the next one. Just make a, a quick run north here. And this one is actually hidden in one of the forests here. Looks like we got a uh, bear here. Alright, and this should be our sixth one that we need for the quest. Plus one to string. Alright. Well, I guess not. Maybe we need one more here. 
There we go. It just took it a second to uh, get that taken care of. And while he's uh, standing there, let's go ahead and get rid of him. Now the Articus is actually a addition, actually most recently in the updates. Uh, they normally stay off to themselves to the uh, forest outside the mountain path, but if you're adventuring and you're taking care of the map, uh, you'll probably run into these guys a little bit. Uh, they do a fair amount of damage with their like headbutt. Let's see if we can't find that here. Mm -hmm. We have malls, 34. So if you're just coming into the mountain bath, say taking uh, care of Edwin Coli, getting him back for the Outlaw's quest, uh, and you run into these guys, you might not be up to snuff to handle them. But once you're past that point, uh, you'll see them... Uh, be a little bit less of a hassle. They are decent with experience. Now that we have our quest fulfilled, we will go ahead and run back through and collect that uh, reward and we will change over our druid into a geomancer. Now geomancers uh, just from their druid perspective, druids are able to do a little bit of range damage with slings. Uh, they can melee. Uh, they can cast. They can heal. They are a very versatile uh, class. And then going to the geomancer just gives them uh, that much more of a casting bonus uh, for their elemental spells. Back at the Druid's Cove, we need to speak with the BCO, and he will finish out our quest. You know, we're going to go ahead and change our Druid over to Geomancer. No gold, but 450 experience, and of course that's will be enough to level a lot of our team members up here. We'll go ahead and take those. Now, with the Geomancer ability, of course, we're going to have the uh, crystals, but we get a couple of new spells that some people can use. Uh, most notably is going to be Meteor. Uh, that will be accessible for our mage or wizard at a decent level. I'm going to put in a couple of proficiencies here so I can get it to level 2. Uh, if you opt to go Exorcist instead of Priest, which is going to be our next portion, uh, Exorcist can learn the Meteor spell after having it unlocked from uh, the Geomancer quest. But other than that, uh, the elemental caps for the Geomancer actually go almost all the way to full. And of course our uh, elemental res resist are going to be high too. And of course our uh, magic skill is not as high as what everything else is. And we will get to learn uh, healing ore that's going to become available. Also let's go ahead and put those on here. But again the, the main damage spell that is brand new that we're going to be able to get is that meteor and again it does physical damage so anything that's immune to physical damage uh, such as uh, undead non-physical forms meaning ghosts or uh, specters those won't be affected by meteor but anything like skeletons and zombies uh, that have a physical form they will certainly take a lot of damage from them now we got 10 points left here i'm going to go ahead and i'm just going to dump uh, the remaining points into uh, meteor, so it's at a good proficiency. Now, granted, this spell cost is going to be fairly outrageous, but that will be okay. And our mage gained a little bit of, not our mage, our wizard gained a little bit of utility being able to learn uh, the heal spells and healing aura. So, although he's not that I have as high as cap for uh, 
the elementals as what our geomancer does. He's going to make it up in a little bit of utility and the AOE spells that he normally has. And again, it's going to be a fair amount of uh, class cap, but it's not as high as what our geomancer is. I tell you what, join us next time. We're going to be going through the guild quest for our exorcist, which is going to be the alternate route for our priest. Now this team, we went priest, so I'm going to show you uh, how it would be if you go exorcist. Join us next time.